Oh, don't worry, Daddy. Mom's just fine. She went best dressed patient and miscongeniality at the hospital. <laughs> You're laughing. It's good to hear you laugh. You must be feeling better, are you? Are you feeling better? Well, good. I, I, that's great. And how's work in Philadelphia? So when are you coming home? Tomorrow afternoon? Oh, great. Sh should I come get you at the airport? Uh, okay. Um, I'll meet you here at the house then. Well, I'll go out for dinner. I can't wait to see you. Are you sure you're feeling okay? I love you too, Dad. Great talk. He was very up, very positive. You know, our last conversation wasn't such a hot one. I know. He felt really badly about what he said, but but he said he wants to come home and get himself into therapy. I mean, he wants to do everything he can to get better. That's good. You and your father sure know how to talk to each other, don't you? What about Tommy Pelleggi? Everything fine? Oh, yeah. He said they had a whole bunch of paperwork to do and stuff, but they got it all done. These are absolutely incredible. Yeah. Daddy said them. Who else? Yeah. Did he say when he's coming home, Missy? Tomorrow afternoon. He said he can't wait to get home. He cannot wait to see us. Where are you going? Mom, it's 10 o'clock. Visiting hours ended at 9. I need you like I've never needed you before. Mom, it's not like you had a liver transplant. Listen, you know, liposuction hurts too. I have a tape of old yellow. Stick around. We'll play it backward. We'll watch the mud get well. It's a tempting offer, but uh, I think I'm going to go home. Give me a kiss. When do I see you again? Tomorrow morning when I come to pick you up. Or you could walk. Ha ha ha. Drive carefully. Dr. Levy Tumor. Ow. Yes, that's right. I'm Mrs. Rosenberg's manager. Melissa. Melissa. No, I will speak with Mrs. Rosenberg. Thank you. You're here early. Mom won't be home till later. Melissa, come in and sit down. What is it? What's wrong? Please, just come in and sit down. There's something that I have to say to you. What's the matter? It's Daddy, isn't it? Melissa, they found him in his hotel room. They think that it's a suicide. That's not possible. I talked to him last night. He said he was coming home. He, he, he promised. I am so sorry. He lied to me. Are you going to be okay? Does my mother know? No. What's happened? Melissa, just tell me what's happened. Well, 1987 was not a very good year for me. First of all, I got two speeding tickets and I wasn't even driving a car at the time. I went to Las Vegas. I threw my hotel key up at Tom Jones. He took it and burglarized my hotel room. 
Then I went to my high school reunion, and there was Marilyn Abramson. She'd always been the most beautiful girl in my class. I hated her. My mother said, it's all right, it's all right. She's peaky now. When she grows up, she's not going to be pretty. Well, you know what? There was Marilyn at my high school reunion, and she was still peaking. It killed me. But I learned a good life lesson. My mother was a liar, a big, fat liar. Then I had my hysterectomy, and Ake and my husband had his triple bypass, and we were fired from Fox. Then Edgar had his nervous breakdown, and he committed suicide. So like I said, 1987 was not a very good year for me. I thought I'd keep you company. You shaved your beard? Hey, Lung, you look so vulnerable. Tommy Pelleggi called. He said he's not going to come to your funeral. How do you like that, huh? Your best friend. Not coming. He said he warned you when he spoke to you on the phone. You do anything wrong, he's not going to come to the funeral. He's a man of his word. So don't expect him. Cousin, you hate calls. She wants to come. Missy and I decided we'd ban her. Oh, I wish you were here. I wish you were here. Could have called, you know. Why the hell didn't you call? Why, why, why didn't you just come home? We could have worked things out. We're a team. Why don't we not, why don't we not sat down and work things out civilly and normally and intelligently and Send them to a hospital. Look at this. Look at all these people who have fired from Fox. They're two months too late. People who don't even know are sending us flowers. Any more come, just, just give them to the neighbors. What is it? It's Daddy's bag. Look how neat it is. Everything in its place. File of facts. His favorite pen. Hanky. Everybody else used Kleenex. Never daddy. Oh, mom. There's glasses. Shh, 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 shh. It's all right. It's all right. Dressed to you, baby. It's more for me, too. I can't listen to this now. I can't bear to hear his voice. I am just so tired. I can't stop thinking about him. 
thought I was never going to see me graduate. Never see what I do with my life. The kind of person I grow up to be. Never meet the man I'm going to marry. Get to know my children. They never let white flowers in the house because it was my They were happy this year for you. Thank you, sir. The funeral was great. I mean, it was, it was not a Beverly Hills funeral. Mm -hmm. the, the funerals here are so strange. I mean, people so shallow, they only bury them three feet deep. It's just so <laughs> strange. I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, everyone came. Did you see everybody? I mean, Cher was there and Dolly Parton and Roddy McDowell. Elizabeth Taylor called. I mean, it's all just... It was like I was, I was, I was watching out of my body. Did that make sense? I mean, just above it all. Which is great because I, I never like being in my body that much anyhow. But it was just it was so crazy. Egg is she's going for egg is going for a while. I go in the kitchen. I something to you. Sweetie, what are you going to do now? I'm 19 years old. What the hell am I supposed to do? Are you going to be all right? I'm going to be fine. Are you sure you don't want me to spend the night? No, I, I think we should spend some time alone with Melissa, don't you? Well, it was a beautiful service. Edgar would have approved. It was tasteful. And he was a very elegant man. Yes, he was. It was that, it was that damn English pride thing, that strong, silent, self-control. He never talked to anybody, right, Dorothy? Once, Carl. Once we were married 15 years, we, we were driving home in the little club, and he pulled the car to the side of the road, and he said, I've got to talk to you. 15 years, we were best friends, never a day apart. He said, what is it? He said, I've got to tell you this. I thought, oh, God, there's a woman, or he likes boys, or he's killed somebody. Who the hell knows what? I said, what is it? What? He said, Joan, when I was a child, I had tuberculosis. And I went, yeah. And he said, please, don't tell Missy. So, of course, I went right home and told Missy. That was Edgar. Do you need anything, Joan? Yeah. Can you turn the clock back two weeks? Maybe if I'd, I'd been nicer to him, he'd be here now. Maybe if I just picked up a phone and said, hey, kiddo, come on home. How am I going to help Melissa? What can I do for her? Tell her what she already knows. That you love her, and that you're there for her. Mm. I love you, too. Have I ever felt worse? Okay. Have I ever looked worse? Well, once, maybe, in 19... Not now. Not now.
I'll see you tomorrow. Melissa and I lived in Beverly Hills for 18 years. Beverly Hills is totally different from any other part of this entire country because everybody in it's so, so rich. I mean, the money is incredible. Once my neighbor walked up to me and said, I need a new dishwasher. I said, broken. She said, no, deported. And the school system was the same thing. I mean, rich kids in rich schools. Science class, they dissected lobsters. The marching band was taken around a Mercedes. In shop class, you know what they taught the kids to do? Shop. Edgar and I decided that Melissa should go east to school to get a good eastern education. She had picked the University of Pennsylvania. A month after Edgar died, I took her back to college. It was her senior year and she was moving to a house off campus with some friends. It's not. I just don't want to arrive on campus in a limo, Mom. I want to be like everybody else. And maybe I should wear a ski mask. It's not the worst idea you've ever had. Missy, do you have a problem? No. You want to talk about it? Are you angry about something? I'm angry about a lot of things, okay? Okay. J j just follow us. Wait. Wait. Just wait. Okay, God, I get it. It's a joke. This is not what my daughter is going to spend her senior year in college. She's using this house to meet her friends in God. She's going to meet her friends and they're going to walk in a nice dormitory and that's where they're going to spend their senior year. Not here, God. You just forgot to tell me this joke, huh, God? You guys moved in already. You're in the boys' house? Mrs. Bates! Norman! We're home! 
mother. Yo, mommy. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Tim. <clears throat> Mom, this is Tim Chapin. Hello, I'm Melissa's mother. Yeah, I kind of figured that. Listen, I had read in the newspaper about Mr. Rivers. Rosenberg. Right. Um, anyway, I'm really sorry about your dad. So are we. Tim, let me give you my phone number. Melissa, ever gets in after 11 o'clock, please call me, huh? Is that 11 o'clock at night or 11 in the morning? Wise guy. Why don't you listen to her room? If you hear any strange sounds in there, gurglings, gigglings, whatever, call me. Day and night. Collect. I'll keep an eye on her. Okay. <laughs> It'd be a pleasure. Uh, if you need any help, just let me know. Okay. No, 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 no. Leave the bags. I'll take care of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to meet you. I'm a, I'm a really big fan. Thank you. You and three others. He's a kidney pie. What do you think? Isn't it great? Maybe with the lights out. Bye. Here's a hundred dollars. Buy yourself a plan for that pathetic roof. Now be good and study hard. It's costing me 17 grand a year. I Missy, promise. Missy, I have an idea. What if we threw a bed in your room and I stayed a few more days? We go shopping for school supplies. I, I can't pack you. Mommy, it's time. I'm very proud of you. You gonna be okay? How can you ask me that? I know. It's so hard to say goodbye. <laughs> So far away. It's okay. I can take care of myself. I'll have the egg bouillon and oh, the Chinese chicken salad. Michael. Michael, I don't understand any of this. This was Egg's department. Just explain it to me. Well, here's the situation. Edgar left everything he owned to Melissa. What? She's a 19-year-old kid. What, what are you telling me? Your daughter is now your 50% partner in all of your financial dealings. She owns half of everything. Half of your house, half of your stocks, half of your car, half the money. And that's the good news. The bad news is you have no liquid assets. Oh, that's impossible. Edgar had it all planned out. All of your holdings are long-term, and a lot of it's in real estate. As you know, the bottom has all but dropped out of the market. I can't believe it. I'm going to have to cut way back, lower your overhead. And you'll have to get back to work right away. But Edgar's only been dead five weeks. Look, I'm sorry, Joan, but the fact of the matter is you have no available cash. Do you understand that? You have to go back to work. Now. You like straight talk? Let me give it to you straight. There's no work for you. Nobody wants to see a woman whose husband just committed suicide trying to be funny. Hey, don't sugarcoat it, Marty. No, I'm serious, Joan. Your talk show is regarded as a failure. Therefore, you are seen as a failure. I cannot get you work. Marty, I'm in this business 23 years. You can get me something. No, you are unbookable. Johnny Carson made you a villain. He never forgave you for leaving his show. He convinced America you were evil. What about club dates? What, what about Vegas? Joan, read my lips. No one wants to see the widow of a suicide making jokes. Marty, read my lips. I need to work. I will do anything. Look, Joan, this isn't personal. It's business. I don't necessarily agree. But Manny and Jack feel that our relationship with you is no longer mutually productive. Are you giving me back my papers? Are you letting me go? Look, you've had a great 16 years with the agency, and we've loved you very much. But we can't do any more for you. I don't need you. I will get my own damn work. I love Joan Rivers. <laughs> Man. Hey, Bill. You want to watch class? Maybe grab some lunch? I'm running late. You go on without me. Wow, your mom's working already. Your dad just died. I'm available. I'm sorry. That, that was a gross thing to say. 
It's okay. Knock and nobody was home. She went inside and fell asleep. When she awoke, the dwarves gave her. Sure, you don't want to get trash cover burger? What was it? A seven sponge bag. Joan River. You gone ahead. Joan, you look lovely with your low cleavage and your little flower there. It's really quite daring for you, I think, isn't it? For me, anything is daring at this age. <laughs> Just sitting up out of bed is daring. <laughs> Hi, Dorothy. Is my mom there? Okay, Jenna, let's see if you'll get to drive oh. the beautiful Mazda. Perhaps the mini truck. Okay. Or the luxury sedan town car. Just tell her I called. My own house. Can you believe that? I just can't do anything right. I just can't do it. I can't balance my checkbook. I, I can't find my safe deposit box. Edgar did everything. He did the insurance and the bank account and the, the bookkeeper and the contracts. I got my contract today from Hollywood Squares. They went to my comments. You know what my comments were? Pretty paper. Oh, just Edgar did it all. I, I never thought I'd have to. Aside from that, how was your day? Oh, by the way, Melissa called. She okay? Actually, she sounded annoyed. She says you're never here when she calls. She wants me to be the widow on the hill. She wants me to sit in a chair and grieve. I don't think she understands. Can she? She's 19 years old. She just lost her father. She's got her own set of problems. But I'm going to burden her with mine. What am I going to say now? Melissa? Melissa? I run and run and run and run and run night and day like a lunatic. I just can't bear the thought of being in this big house alone. Well, maybe if you explained to her, if you told her that... <sighs> and say what? I'm lonely, I'm manic. Sometimes I feel that I killed Edgar, that, that Daddy blamed me for everything. Can't do it, Dorothy. I just gotta push forward. For both of us. For her and for me. 2646. Who is Hannah Myerson? The psychic, Joan. She says she can channel it. Yes, Dorothy, I am that desperate. Hey, did he say to review Herodotus or Hippolytus? I'm totally confused. He wants a four-page essay on Heraclitus. Defend the statement, one cannot step into the same river twice. That's easy. But can two people step into the same river once? Um, I'm Porter Cameron. You must be Melissa, right? Right. Listen, this is going to sound a little awkward, but... My dad was a suicide, too. Three years ago. So I know how you feel. I know what you're going through because I've been through it all myself. <laughs> So if you ever want to talk about it. <laughs> I couldn't get out of bed for six months, okay? I could not concentrate. I could not read. I mean, can you study? It's hard, but um, I'm doing okay in my classes so far. I really admire that. I had to drop out for a year. <laughs> Well, maybe it's easier for me being away from home. There's not as many memories. I know. Sometimes you actually forget about it for a while. And then you feel incredibly guilty. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't talk to people for the longest time. I completely dropped out from the human race. I know. I don't even want to be with my friends. I feel so frozen, like I can't communicate. Not even with my mother. Which is probably just as well, because she's never home to talk to anyway. I think she's worried about me, though. I mean, she wants me to see this shrink. But I don't really want to talk to him, either. Oh, <laughs> shrinks. Tell me about it. I mean, no matter what you do, until enough time passes, you just can't help feeling bad. 
I used to cry all the time. Really? Yeah. You can do that with me if you want. And if you feel like crying, cry. So, is there anything you want to talk about? I hate economics. I don't hate it. I just hate my professor. He makes it so dull and, and formulaic. I don't really hate him. I just think I resent his approach to teaching. Well, th that's why you're here, to discuss your professor's teaching style? Who are you here for? For yourself or for your mother? It wasn't my idea. Look, I know this is a terribly difficult time it's for you. It's fine. Melissa. Really, everything's fine. That was my wife. <laughs> uh, I've got carpal tunnel, so tennis is out. But we're planning a vacation to St. Bart's. As soon as we finish remodeling the house. Well, Max and I have reached the point that we are sick and tired of going out for the sake of going out. We've had it up to here with Bridge. So, we have a new rule. Every Sunday we spend together, alone. That's what Sundays are all about, staying home together. Right, Joan? You got it. <laughs> you know, there are yuppies, young urban professionals. There are dinks, double income, no children. I was an oink. One income, no choice. I was single again. Single. I was dateable. Ugh. I suddenly realized I was going to need a whole new set of old friends. And I didn't want to date at my age. I mean, even when I was young, I was never sexy. I'd always thought that one day I'd grow up and be one of those women that was like a, a devil bride. You know what I mean? So hot, you would walk through the supermarket, touch the frozen foods, and they go, Pff. Never happened with me. But I had to go out. I wasn't going out to meet men. I just, I just wanted company. I didn't care if they were gay, if they were straight. I didn't care if there were two in the crowd or 12. I just wanted out. And I would run and run and run and run and run and run and run. I wouldn't come home until I was absolutely exhausted. Because then the real pain would start. I saw Edgar everywhere, the path, the memories. It was all so close. I couldn't think, I couldn't rest. Sometimes I, I couldn't breathe. I've got to get out of this house. Melissa! Tommy. Congratulations. Why? This is the first time you didn't give your mother a hard time about going to temple. Well, I'm not religious, but uh, it is the holiest day of the year. The day we pray for the dead. I'm going to go and pray for my father's soul, if there's a God. Well, then, this is not the time to hedge your bets. No. Where's Mom? She's on the phone. That's how it else is new. You want anything to eat? Drink? Mom, it's Yom Kippur. We're fasting. So, how do you like the East Coast headquarters? It's nice for a hotel, but not as nice as our house in L.A. Well, what do you think? Well, I think it's hard for your mother to live there alone right now. Yeah, and it's such a big house, and she's such a tiny person. But this move to New York, I mean, it's just a temporary thing, isn't it? Well, I think she likes it here. But she hasn't actually mentioned anything to you about selling the house, has she? You miss the old homestead, eh? Yeah. I felt safe there. I have no roots. The house is all I have left. I miss Daddy. 
So do I. I want to have one of those experiences that people talk about where they can feel the presence of the person that died, like right there in the room with them, or if they're driving in the back seat of the car. Anywhere, really. You never know. That could still happen. Well, if it does, I hope it happens during an exam. It'll be like, hey, Dad, question seven, true or false? Why? <laughs> How are things for you? Sad. I know. You were Daddy's best friend. You can't imagine how much I miss him. Missy, you're late. I've already lit Daddy's memorial candle. I could have waited for me. Honey, we have to hurry. Service is starting in 15 minutes, and you know how they are in Yonke. It's easier to get seats for the World Series. Tommy, this is the Jewish World Series. Oh, you look so pale. Are you all right? I'm just afraid I'm going to lose it when they mention Daddy's name. Me too, honey. Me too. Thank you so much. We'll see you in two hours. Taxi! We're never gonna make it on time. We can't wait for a cab, Missy. Taxi! Let's just make a run for it. You're late. I know. The traffic is horrific. Every seat is taken. No, no, no. We're, we're in the reserve section, B-34 and 35. You're too late. I'm giving your seats away. Don't shush me, Mother. Mother, please. Listen, please. You can't get in the way. I paid for the... You're way. late. There's yeah. nothing I can do. No, no, Mother, please don't Shelby make a scene. Shelby can be in these seats. No, please Mom, don't shush, shush. Mommy, it's memorial service. Let us stand in the back. <laughs> The police car pulls up beside me at the red light and they start staring at me like I'm wanted for murder. I hate that feeling, it's so unnerving. I have a system that scares them right off. Just look back and pick your nose. <laughs> hey, you can drive through the red light if you want to. Didn't me, you play not this, this room 20 years ago? I figures. played a hundred rooms like this 20 years ago. Never thought I'd be back. These jokes are road tested. What if Marty's right? What if they won't accept me as a winner? They will, you'll do fine. You've got to. I don't think I'm funny anymore. Well, I guess then you're going to have to get a job as a manicurist. You are such a comfort to me in my old age, Dorothy. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Cleveland's Comedy Spot is proud to present America's Funniest Woman. Right. Please welcome Miss Joe. <laughs> what if I break down? What if I start to cry on you stage? Won't. You're a trooper. You're a pro. Now get on out there and... Say it. Come on, say it. Just say it. Get on out there and... Knock them dead. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Hello, and uh, it's great to be here. Um, as you know, this has not been the best year in the world for me. Uh, I was fired from Fox. And, and, no, 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 no. It's okay. I'm, I'm not allowed legally to talk about it, according to my lawyer, for another eight months, 14 days. Uh, <laughs> Three hours, <laughs> four minutes, and uh, seven seconds. And, but as soon as that's up, give me a call. All right. It doesn't even have to be collect. I'll talk to you and tell you the whole thing. Trust me. Um, anyhow, that, but it, 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 was, it was a lousy year in general. Uh, my husband, as some of you may or may not have uh, read, he, uh, he had a triple bypass, and then he had a nervous breakdown, and uh, then he, uh, he, he committed suicide. And uh, he left in his will that he should be cremated and his ashes scattered all over Neiman Marcus because at least he knew that way I would visit him every day. <laughs> so, you see, you haven't lost your touch. Oh, they were very kind. No, you were very, very good. Who are you calling, Melissa? Yeah. Oh, uh, could I just give Miss Ferguson a moment? Honey? Oh, sure. It's me. Listen, I just got off stage. I mean, but literally just got off stage. Missy, I was so scared in the beginning. I thought I was going to faint, but it worked out just fine. Mom, I know you've got to work, but come on. This is ridiculous. It's only two months since Daddy died. How can you stand up there and tell jokes in front of people? Wait a second. I, I don't think this is an affront to Daddy at all. See, what do you want me to do? 
crawl into a ball and get under a blanket and hide somewhere? No, but you can respect his memory a little bit longer. How could you get out there and do stand-up routines? Melissa, will you just try to understand, please? Missy, we need the money. Whatever, do what you want. M Missy, we have bills to pay. Fine. Whatever. I have to Whatever. work, Melissa, would you? Melissa? She hung up on me. It's so hard being the mother of a daughter in this day and age. I mean, you try to be their friend, and you also have to still be their mother. You've got to teach them morals and responsibilities and ethics and sex. You've got to talk to them about sex. And really, honestly, in my day, I think it was a lot better. My mother told me nothing, and I knew nothing. To me, going all the way was visiting my cousin Natalie in New Jersey. I mean, my mother just couldn't bring herself to tell me the facts of life. Once she spoke to me, she said, Joan, only have sex with someone you love very, very, very much, or your husband. That was Melissa. That was different. She came to me, I think she was seven, and she said, Mommy, tell me about sex. So I sat her down. I told her all about the birds and the bees and the birds and the bees and the birds and the bees. And after about an hour, she said, that was very, very interesting. Now, Mommy, tell me about sex. <sighs> and we talked. It was nice. When she was 11, she came to me again, I remember, and she said to me, Mommy, what was your first time like? I said, darling, it was the most beautiful minute and a half I ever spent in the back seat of a car. Hey, sunshine. Don't make fun of me. I'm not in the mood. Whoa. Excuse me. I thought I was just saying hello. Look, I'm just having a really bad time right now. Tell me. I just want to sleep. I can't concentrate. I have no appetite. And when I don't feel like crying, I feel like screaming. And on top of all that, I keep trying to call my mother and she's never there. Do you think she's okay? Oh, I'm sure she is. She's just not at home. She never is. Listen, maybe she has to go out. Every single night? My father's dead two months. Maybe getting out is her way of dealing with the pain. Maybe. But if it is, she sure knows how to enjoy her suffering. The only thing I enjoy these days is riding. I mean, I can just lose myself in it. Stop thinking entirely. Know what I mean? So? What about your father? I think we've been avoiding that subject. It's very difficult for me to talk about him. I know. But I think about him all the time. I never know what's going to trigger it. I'll hear a song he liked, or... Some days it's just the quality of the light. Silly things. Like yesterday at lunch. Someone orders an avocado salad, and I remember the time that I'm in kindergarten, and um, we grew avocado pits, you know, with the toothpicks in them. It was a class project. Well, mine took, and um, I brought it home, and Daddy planted it in a pot, and it outgrew that, and so he took it and he planted it out back behind the house in the backyard. It grew into a tree. It's still there behind the house. I don't know what I would do without that house. It means everything to me. It's all I have left of my father. Let's go get something to eat. I made dinner. So, where are your roommates? I don't have any. You're kidding. You mean you have this entire place to yourself? Yeah. My father left this to me. Must need a lot of space. That, and I make it a rule never to share a house with anyone I don't sleep with. You must be starving. Dinner should be ready by now.
Voila. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first meal I have prepared completely by myself. Miss, would you care for the escargot, the caviar, the brie, or the salmon? I think I'll be starting with the jelly sandwich. Oh, excellent choice. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the best meals I have ever had. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, maybe it was the company. <laughs> well. Well. Can I kiss you? No. <laughs> no? Why no. not? Because I don't know your taste in music. Ah, well, it's big band, Jimmy Dorsey. Now? Okay. <laughs> um, am I that bad a kiss? <laughs> no. 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 You just make me feel all sorts of things that I'm not sure I can handle right now. Like what? Like I'm afraid I'm not going to feel anything or that I'll feel too much. You can let go, Melissa. I mean, don't hold on to your emotions. Don't bottle them up. I'm here for you. I trust you. I just don't know if I trust myself. Listen, you know, sooner or later, you are going to have to step back into life. Your dad would want you to do that. I know he would. So, listen to me. I'm here for you. See, when my dad committed suicide, well, I didn't ha have anyone to help me through it, so... I didn't know how to reach out. But I want you to. I want you to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't want to pressure you into anything. If uh, you want me to go, I'll go. I'll, I'll understand. Try and remember me fondly. I know you'll land on your feet because you're a survivor. Goodbye, and I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> Did I scare you? Oh, yeah. I have a real phobia about Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Come to my party. It's the creepiest night of the year. You should be there. <laughs> I have a sore throat. Come on, it'll be fun. There's hot apple cider, loud music. I brought your costume and everything. <laughs> Please. Please. I got a surprise. Trick or treat. Look, I don't care how much you drink. Just don't do drugs, okay? Come on. I don't like cocaine. It makes me feel out of control. You gotta like coke. You're in L.A., babe. Will you promise me? No drugs. Deal. Buddy's on her. Porter? Porter! He's, he's going.
gone far, far away. We have to wake him. Porter! Porter! Are you just gonna stand there and watch me? Could I? Porter! Tim! I'm Porter! I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <sighs> I don't think that's a milk mustache. He promised me, damn it. Ta-da! <laughs> Porter was a bad boy. Yes, he was. What a tarry. Very, very tarry. Porter, you just can't do this. Okay. Now let's do some more blow. I don't believe you. Come here, you little weapon. Come no. here, you little weapon. Hey, 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 okay. hey, you're a weapon. I can't believe I'm auditioning for a Broadway Hi. play. They're ready for you now. Oh, thank you. All right, now, just remember to breathe. Take it slow, just like we rehearsed it. Okay. I like the third girl. Manny Azenberg, Gene Sachs. Joan Rivers. Joan. Oh. Well. You must really want this role. Oh, you have no idea. Thank you for letting me audition. This is not a stunt, Joan. We, we don't want a Las Vegas comic. I know. That's why I called and asked to read. All right. Yeah. I, I brought my own sweater. It, it'll just be a second. My grandfather made this table with his own hands for my grandmother. Over 52 years she had this table. She's going to do a Neil Simon play on Broadway. You should be glad. Well, I am glad, but it's not that simple. They start rehearsals right away. The play could run for months, maybe years. And you know what that means? Big bucks. No, it means she's really going to want to sell the house in L.A. now. I'm not going to let her do it. Wait a minute. Slow down. You don't know that for sure. She's in New York. She has a whole new life. That house is my life. My father left it to me. He wanted me to have it. It's everything that ever was. Everything that'll never be again. And I'm not going to give that up. Has Porter called you? Yeah. But I don't want to talk to him. It's probably a wise policy. I miss him. I can't help it. And you're not going to see him, right? Right. So you hungry? You wanna you wanna get a pizza? You go to a movie or something? I don't know. Come on, you have to eat. These days I prefer to sleep. I just can't seem to get enough of it. That's a classic sign of depression. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Freud. I'm sorry, a little psych 101 is a dangerous thing. <laughs> it's okay. My shrink tells me the same thing, only he gets paid for it. Wow. It's the third time he's done this. <laughs> It's a romantic son of a gun, isn't he? Here. Have some. <sighs> Wish I had someone to give him to. <laughs> Put him in your room. Real men take time to smell the flowers. <sighs> oh, my God. Should this pup grow up without a male role model? I love you, Porter. Jerry Warner, Parker Madison. Joan Rivers, it'd be good. <laughs> yes, indeed. I understand you and I are going apartment hunting together. Yeah, listen, can I be totally honest with you? Please. I don't want to waste your time. I mean, I I'm looking for an apartment, thank you. But I'm not looking. I'm looking. And even if I find something, I may not want to take it because I don't know if I can sell my house in Los Angeles.
Not a problem. I'll make a deal with you. I will show you the most hideous apartment in New York. You won't want it, and you and I will go have lunch. What, what if I like the apartment? Not a chance. Interior designed by Bella Lugosi Associates. Unless, of course, you insist on cathedral ceilings and have light bats. You really do a very hard sell. <laughs> can, can I ask you something? Sure. You just um, seem like the, the typical real estate agent, you know? Ah, you found me out. I usually do not uh, go out and look for apartments with clients. I'm kind of a behind-the-scenes guy, but, uh, well, I pulled some strings when I found out that Joan Rivers was looking for a place. Oh, yeah, right. Whose palm did you cross the silver for this? <laughs> My own, actually. I own the company. Now, listen. Now, listen. I don't, don't, don't say I didn't warn you on this, all right? This apartment is grotesque. It's been on the market for over two years. Okay. We're going to take a quick look, and then we're out of here. Deal? Deal. All right. Simon, how are you? Good morning. So I guess the cute approach didn't cut it with you. I know I can't buy your forgiveness, and I guess happiness isn't a warm puppy. I miss you. I miss us. What does it take, Melissa? Do you really want to know? Yeah. No more drugs. <laughs> Is that all? I could have saved a fortune of flowers. I am serious, Porter. So am I. I haven't touched a thing since that night. I'm 100% drug-free. I promise. Word of honor. You pushed me. I'm sorry. I know I did it. I can't even remember doing it. I can't believe I did something like that. If you ever touch me like that again... I won't. Ever. I promise. <laughs> Gothic. I can't see you in a gothic. It's like a church. Will you just listen to me? I want it. I really want the apartment. You can't be serious. I can't sell you that apartment. I'd never forgive myself. You'd never forgive me. Listen, Jerry. I want the apartment. I know it's a mess. I can make it into a gem. Besides, with, with the renovation and my rehearsal for the Broadway show, it'll keep me busy. That's what I need at this time in my life. This is all backwards. I'm supposed to be selling you the apartment, but if you want it, it's yours. Here. <sighs> String to your new life. What? What's the matter? What did I say? It's just... Just that Edgar will never see the apartment. Well, we can drink to the happy part, can't we? Come on, we can do that. Let's drink to the happy part. Come on. Good. So... Tell me about Edgar. What was he like? Oh, very English. Smart. Strong. Very distinguished. He was everything I'm not. Barbara Walters once said, I can't see him liking you. But he did. I think it's because I brought fun to his life. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. My wife and I were like that. We complimented each other. Are you divorced? No, she died four years ago. Breast cancer. I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. I miss her. But I always will. I know how you feel. I know you do. <laughs> Nobody can prepare you for mourning, can they? What it's like to really be alone. What you miss most when someone you love is gone, like coming home from a party and getting in the car and having someone to say, did you hear what that bitch said? I mean, can you believe what she said? Or calling out to somebody, hurry up, hurry up, Masterpiece Theater's on. Or him saying, I'm going downstairs, do you want a sandwich? Or, Sid, it's okay. I'll walk the dog, you relax. I miss having a history with someone. I miss being able to turn to someone and say, do you remember Mrs. Tattlebaum's shoes? And then the two of you just laughing and laughing and laughing. I miss knowing my husband took his coffee black with one sugar. I miss landing in Chicago and having someone to call and say, it's okay, it was a lousy flight, but I'm here, I'll see you tomorrow. I miss Edgar, Melissa, and me. 
I miss the three of us standing online at a restaurant. Just being a family. <laughs> Things change when you get married. When I first got married, we used to run around, we'd play games like catch me, catch me. I was married 22 years. We still play catch me, catch me, but we walked. The attitude was different. Catch me. <laughs> Can I catch you tomorrow? Sure, catch me tomorrow. What the hell? I'll know in advance. I'll take a bath. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just as well. Because maybe, maybe my husband didn't think I was good in bed, you know? Do, do you think you're good in bed? Mm hmm. Well, oh, you're so lucky. I, I don't know. Last night I said to the guy I was with, how come you don't call out my name when we're making love? He said, I don't want to wake you up. Um, you use condoms? You use con You should, you know. You should use condoms. Uh, you know what I was using for a while, birth control? I was using a slinky. How many of you ever used a slinky? <laughs> it's great. Uh, uh, you can make love go downstairs at the same time. <laughs> that, and I was using IUD, a coil. But I gave up my coil because I was picking up Radio Free Europe. You know? I would be... I would be at my kids, you know, high school graduation. I'd hear, this is the voice of freedom, and it was coming from my pants. <laughs> that, and every time I forced that, I forced my legs, the garage doors would open. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You're fantastic. No. The, the joke where I say, why don't you call my name? We're making love. It should have worked. It lay there, bomb. People just don't want to hear me having a boyfriend. Well, maybe the joke just doesn't work. Oh, trust me, Tommy. It's a good joke. It should work. Hey. <laughs> Hi. You know what we have here? A pre-Thanksgiving dinner. Just for the two of us. <laughs> okay, okay, the three of us. <laughs> Kelly. This is so sweet. Did you make it yourself? Of course not. I picked up the whole thing at Turkey's R Us. <laughs> this stuffing is going to go directly to my thighs. You sound just like your mother. The good news? It's the first time you have since I've known you. Does she know about us? About me? No. And I don't want her to. Kelly! Why not? Are you ashamed of me? <laughs> no. She would be crazy about you. You are exactly her type. Tall, rich, and charming. Mm, so you're hiding me from her. <laughs> you're afraid she wants me all to herself. That is the most <sighs> narcissistic comment I have ever heard. And believe me, I have heard more than my share. Then tell her about us. I want you to. No. I want to keep one part of my life that's entirely my own. I don't need to share every shred of information with her. Besides, she doesn't tell me about her private life. Why should I tell her about mine? Does she have one? A private life? Yeah. I think so. I think she's seeing someone. We're supposed to go to his house for Thanksgiving. Wow. That should be interesting. I am totally dreading it. So anybody want seconds? Oh, not if my life depended on it. This has been a terrific evening, Jerry. Thank you. Uh, Melissa? I'm full. How come every Thanksgiving I eat so much I feel like throwing up? Thanks for sharing, Marcy. I guess you better hold off on the pumpkin pie for a while, huh? Remember how much Daddy loved pumpkin pie? Mm. So, how are things going up at school, Missy? Melissa. My name is Melissa. Only my mother and my father call me Missy. I'm sorry. So you got any professors up there that knock your socks off? Knock my socks off? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Aren't you going to ask me what's my major? How about some coffee? Yes, please. Good. Be nice. I like your pen. Thanks. I love this pen, too. My father gave it to me for high school graduation. Do you love Penn State? The University of Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's okay. What grade are you in? I don't know. The 16th, I guess. 
More wine, anybody? Yes, please. No, I'm sorry, sweetie. You have to drive. This is a great California. I thought it'd make you feel right at home. Molly, do you remember that wonderful Cabernet Sauvignon that Daddy bought in Paris? He had that entire case shipped over. Your behavior back there was beyond embarrassing. Oh, please. Don't oh please me, Melissa. I'm your mother. I invented oh please. I did not bring you up to be so impolite. Honestly, Mother, do you need to be such a drama queen? What was that? You heard me. Do you need to turn everything into such a soap opera? I mean, you always cast yourself as the star of a Joan Crawford movie. I'll tell you nothing, Nazis. Nothing! Let me tell you, Jerry is a very nice man, a very kind man. He was gracious enough to include us in his Thanksgiving. You're acting like, like Cinderella and her wicked stepsisters. It's not so far from the truth, is it? What? Come on, Mom. I saw what was going on between you two. The shy little smiles, the secret glances. Oh, please, Melissa. You're going to marry him, aren't you? Oh, Missy. I have no intention. You have forgotten all about Daddy. That's some kind of record, Mother. Three months of widowhood and on to the next. Melissa, sit down. I want to talk to you. You can talk to me standing up. Sweetheart. Sweetheart, I... I don't intend to marry Jerry. I, I don't intend to marry anybody. He's easy to be with. He, he's funny. He makes me laugh. He's a widower. He, he knows what I'm going through. Can I go to bed now? No. There's something I want to talk to you about. Sit down. Please. I want to take an apartment in New York. What's there to talk about? You're doing a Broadway show? Of course you're going to live here for a while. No, 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 no. I want to live here permanently, Missy. I want to buy an apartment. I'm going to sell the house in Los Angeles. You what? I'm going to sell the house in Los Angeles. You can't. I mean, I can't. I won't let you. I own half the house. You can't sell it. Oh, what's a please? For goodness sake. It's home. It's all I have left of Daddy. I mean, you could never sell it if you ever really loved him. I'm so tired of hearing how I never loved Daddy. Missy, I'm trying to survive. I have any chance at all it's going to be in New York. But what about me? You're so busy saving yourself. You have completely forgotten about me. Daddy's gone. And now you want to sell our home? You just want to erase everything we ever had together. And what about what we had together? Daddy and I. You were his daughter, sweetheart. I was his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you! You have great boobs. Look, I have no boobs. Does this look good for me? This is a push-up shove over Bazier. $7.95. You put it on down here, you push everything up, 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 up. <laughs> My belly button is right here. I, either you have sex appeal or you don't have sex appeal. Because I, I have no sex appeal. I have no boot. A peeping Tom looked in my window, pulled down the shade. I mean, no sex appeal. <laughs> Bill Donahue had dark hair till he saw me naked. I mean, I just. I mean, no, my vibrator took a look at me and called 911. I mean, it's, 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 I think I'm getting better, okay? I used to say to my husband, how come you don't call out my name when we're making love? He said to me, I don't want to wake you up. So, I mean... Anyhow. Are you decent? Are you a sailor? Where were you ever right about that call out my name gag? Dorothy, how many times have I told you comedy is? Your life, I know, I know. <laughs> Any word from Melissa? Uh, no, she hasn't called. Is she planning to come here for Christmas break? I asked her. She won't even consider it. She wants me to go to Philadelphia, though. Oh, great. Then you won't have to be alone for the holidays. It's not kind of like a Santa Claus thing. She said she's ready to talk in front of a shrink. Well, the two of you haven't been in a room together since Thanksgiving. If you call that being in a room together. Joan, this could be a good thing. Missy obviously needs it. Might bring the two of you back together. Maybe. 
right this way. Please. Now, who would like to go first? I'd like to go first. I have something to say. First off, Mother, I'm very, very angry at you. Lisa, I, I know you're Will angry. Will you let I me know. finish? Lisa, I know why you're angry with me. You're angry with me because I want to sell the house. You want me to keep it. You want me to make it a shrine to Daddy. You want me to make it a monument. I just can't bear to be there. It's not just that. Since Daddy died, you have not spent one minute at home. And you were doing your club act ten minutes after the funeral. Missy, you know why. You couldn't have done it if you really loved him. Oh, would you just stop saying that? I did it because I love Daddy. I have to survive. You have to understand, my mother has blinders on. She runs off of fear. Yes, I've never been so frightened in my life. I was married to a man who for 22 years took care of me. Suddenly, everything's on my shoulders. I'm all alone. You were alone because you left Daddy. And you didn't even tell me about it. You have not been being honest with me, Mother. I was trying to protect you. I, I knew Daddy and I would patch things up somehow. Protect me? You abandoned Daddy when he needed you most. You kicked him while he was down. What the hell do you know? You were here in school riding your damn horses. Were you there for the pain? Were you there for the twists and moves? Were you there for the black depressions? You came in the last seven minutes in this movie. You walked away when he needed you most, just like you're walking away from oh, me. Oh, for God's sakes, what are you talking about? Since Daddy died, I have become completely insignificant. It's always about you, your pain, your grief, your suffering. It's like you take all the attention and the emotion out of a room and just suck it away. It's like I'm not even there. I think about you all the time. I called you every single night. You called me to talk about you, about your suffering. Not once have you even asked me about me, how I really feel. It's always about you. It's always been about you. It'll always will be about you. I am selling that house. I am selling that house with or without your permission. This is, this is absolutely crazy. It's crazy. not. I have needed you. And you have not once been here for me. You got rid of Daddy. And now you're trying to get rid of me. Well, guess what? I'm the one getting rid of you. This is the best chicken I have ever tasted. It should be. It's goose. <laughs> Does everyone have enough wine? Does anyone want a beer, apple cider? This goose tastes funny. Especially if you're a vegetarian. <laughs> no, really, I think it's the marinade. Tastes fine to me. What do you know? You're from Scranton. Nutmeg. It needs more nutmeg. Quarter, it's fun. This will just take a second, Melissa. This is crazy. Sit down. I will get some. We should have it. I want this day to be perfect. Please don't. We really don't need it. I want it. Porter, don't do this. What is your problem, Melissa? You've been so good. Don't wreck it. Beans are excellent. They're very crisp. Back off, Tim. To hell with him. I'm going home. Hi, babe. You're high. high as I'd like to be. I don't believe this. You're not gonna do this. I think I am. Stupid bitch! No. Don't ever do that to me, ever! Stop it! I've never been so nervous in my entire life. 
That's what you said about Cleveland. Being nervous for a comedy club in Cleveland and being nervous for a Broadway debut are two different lifetimes. Places, everyone. Okay, break a leg. But you didn't get caught. So God didn't punish you. The movie has a happy ending. The movie isn't over yet. Three, two, Listen, don't run away from me. I'm not a monster. You are. You're right. Melissa, I've been in treatment for over three months. I don't want anything to do with you. I thought I knew who you were, and it turns out that I didn't. But I didn't either, okay? I mean, I'm just beginning to find out. Look, I'm off drugs, Melissa. I'm off everything except therapy and AA meetings and NA meetings. I, I try over readers anonymous if they'd have me. I'm a rehab junkie. That's it, I promise. You don't buy it, do you? No. Why should I? Because I care about you, because you are the most important person in my life. You are the most dangerous person I have ever met. Is that a compliment? If you don't know, you should get yourself another therapist. About Christmas, I want to explain what happened. Oh, I know exactly what happened. I was reminded of it every time I looked in the mirror. Christmas is the worst time in the world for me, Melissa. Yeah, well, Christmas wasn't so much fun for me either. Christmas is when my father committed suicide. What do you want from me? Just to be your friend, to show you how much I've changed, and maybe win your heart all over again. What do you say? I don't trust you. Then don't give yourself over to me completely. Sample me on a trial basis in broad daylight. Come on. What do you got to lose? Melissa, when she was five years old, was doing better with finger paintings. Yeah, I got that. You know, Edgar used to always say, never buy a painting for anyone born after 1900. Right, well, that was his opinion. <whistles> taxi! Why is it the taxis always disappear as soon as it starts raining? It's the law of perversity. Yeah, we'll come on, we'll walk a couple of blocks. Oh, Jerry, one. please, I'm crazy and it's raining. Tony, come on, it won't take long. It's easy for you. You're not half naked and high heels. You shouldn't be at the mercy of taxis, you know that. You should have hired a car and drive. You're a very wealthy man. And you're a very spoiled woman. Maybe I am, but my husband always said you work hard for living, you reach a certain age, enjoy the food. You're right. I'm not your husband. Come on, I want to show you something. What could you possibly want to show me? <laughs> something. What? That. <laughs> you like? Yeah. Peaceful, huh? Mm-hmm. Wish we could stay like this forever. Can I sit next to you? Yeah. Yeah? I want to trust you. OK? 
can I? I sure hope so. You want a soda? I got some on the ice below. Below? You're such an old salt. Aye, aye. It's not like I asked to slaughter your firstborn or anything. It's a joke when you hear one. I want it all out. Leave me alone. Why? Don't you get it? You're a really sick person. Don't do this to me. Get out. Leave me alone. Stop it. Porter, stop it. Never do that. right here. It's not that bad. Where is he? Cut his hands off. Jeez. I didn't need stitches. Everything's fine. It's not as bad as it looks. He's gonna be locked up for the rest of his life. Do you understand me? For the rest of his life. That's it. You're out of here. You're Don't out of this college. This, You're mother. coming home with me tonight. Please You're coming home with me tonight. And I have a stop car. It. I've had it with your college. You I've had it with your college. I've had it with you. Just sign about your like life. This. You're coming home with me tonight. I am telling you. I don't you, want I you that. here. Please stop it. Stop it. Oh, Miss. Oh. Oh. I just really want Daddy. More tea? Sure. Can I ask you something, Missy? How could you get mixed up with a boy like that? I don't know. I guess I had to beat myself up and I found the right person to do it. I was so numb for so long. So totally out of touch. Porter was in a lot of trouble. I figured if I couldn't save Daddy, well, maybe I could save him. 
Turns out I wasn't much good to either one of them. Oh, Melissa, that's not true. That night in the hotel room, the night that Daddy did it, he lied to me. He told me everything would be fine. I believed him. I felt like such a hero. Like I had talked him off the ledge. Then he hung up the phone and killed himself. Well, listen, there was nothing you could have done about it. I just keep thinking that if I'd only called him back, I, I could have stopped him. I could have saved his life. Listen to me. It's nobody's fault. No one killed Daddy. You didn't kill Daddy. I didn't kill Daddy. Daddy killed Daddy. And I blamed you. <laughs> I blame myself. It was Daddy. He took away our family. We're a family now. You and me. It'll never be the same. No. But we can be happy. I want to thank you for coming down here tonight. Hey, I'm a mother. It's in my job description. I'm sorry for a lot of the things that I said. Some of the things you said were true. Missy, I made a decision. I'm not going to buy the apartment in New York. I'm going to move back to L.A. I'm going to live in the house. But what about the show? Cares about the show. Cares about the apartment. I care about you. No, don't. Go ahead and sell it. What are you talking about? It's not about the house. It's about home. And home is where you are. Are you sure we're doing the right thing? It's a little late to ask now. Yeah, but it's your graduation. I just don't want to steal the spotlight. Mom, if you were hidden away behind a pillar, you would still steal the spotlight. You might as well be right out in front of it. Daddy would be so proud of you, Missy. And my last suggestion, learn to fail. Failure's terrific. It'll make you stronger. You'll be able to look at your mistakes. And failure for me was great. It taught me how to swear. <laughs> invited to speak here today because I'm funny and I'm caustic and I'm cheap <laughs> and, uh, but that's not why I accepted I accepted because I wanted to come to pay tribute to one very special senior my daughter Melissa who has really earned her degree and she got through this year with all that churned around her it's a miracle and she got through this year and it stayed the sweet sensitive, caring, gentle girl that I love is my biggest source of pride. Thank you and congratulations to all of you. a shock when they could kill themselves. It was two years before I could finally say, having a good time and it's okay, it's okay. There are no rules when you mourn. There is no survival guide. You just get through it. But here's something that became crystal clear on that terrible journey. There is this incredible gift that's yours if you're lucky enough to have a daughter. Someone you've known and loved forever. Sure, you bicker and you complain and you criticize and, and sometimes you even separate. But it really doesn't matter because beneath it all, you're going to find out you've given birth to your own best friend. <laughs>